I recently made a robot with ball-shaped omnidirectional wheels which could drive in any direction, and this did really well on YouTube, so since then I've been looking for another wacky wheel idea to build. I came across this tractor on YouTube which is a 1943 Fordson Rotoped, and it has these rather unusual looking self-laying tracks which I thought I'd try and replicate. There's lots of other examples of these on YouTube, and also on Google Images, so I think they were quite popular once upon a time, although I don't think I've seen any in real life. So we're going to make some of those, but I thought I'd make my robot slightly different, and try and make it balance on the two tracks, like a two-wheel balancing robot, rather than having any leading or trailing wheels. So it's time to print some tracks, and see if we can get the sprockets to run okay, and the whole thing to roll along fine. I've made six sections to my tracks just like the originals, and each one of these has a peg in that a sprocket can roll in, and it's important to keep those at even spacings. So I've got my main section with a lid, which screws together, and there's also a recess at one end, which allows the linkages to go together so that we can make the hinge. I've made these black plastic tabs which make up the hinges, and those just screw onto each end, and then each one attaches to the next linkage, and there's just a washer in there you can probably see, and that's what the recess is for, so that we get a nice smooth motion and everything is spaced out properly, without too much friction between the pieces. I've put together six of those to make a rotorped track just like the original footage. Everything seems to be quite free moving, there's not too much friction, and it's looking pretty good. Obviously it's quite important to get those internal pegs the sprocket runs on at consistent spacing, and that means the hinge point for the next linkage is in the place where the next peg would be, so that means the sprocket runs really well and everything runs really smoothly. At least it's fine when I apply pressure to the top of the tracks, but if I now turn the sprocket, you'll find it's quite easy for the top of the track to pop off, and for the sprocket to come out, and everything to go bad. If we look back on the original footage though, you'll notice a triangular arrangement of chains and sprockets, and those appear to be there to solve this very issue, holding the top of the track down, and this works no matter what orientation the track is in. So I use some slightly longer screws, and I'm using some bungee cord for now. On one side we've got the triangle one way up, and if we turn it around we've got the triangle the other way up. But as we rotate the tracks around and roll them around the sprocket, you'll notice we always get a triangle with a point at the top, and that holds the top of the track down no matter what the orientation of the track and the sprocket is. So now we just need to build the rest of the assembly which has the motors and the drive unit in so we can drive two of these tracks and try and make it balance on those tracks. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects, and check out 3dfuel.com. The base of the drive unit has two bearings, one inserted in each side for each of the tracks. It also has two holes in the bottom, and those are to fit the pulleys. So I've now extended the axles on my sprocket so one fits in each side. I 3D printed T5 pulleys which fit just on there and fit into those holes in the base, and those will eventually be glued in place. There's also another bearing and there's a screw on cap to stop the whole thing falling to pieces, so that should support my axles pretty well once everything's screwed together. My motors are incredibly oversized, those are 63, 74, 149 kV motors, but it's always good to have lots of torque throughout the whole range of velocity when you're building a two-wheel balancing robot, so I'm pretty confident that that's going to work okay. There's a screw on front and back to the robot, and both of those are very similar, and they both have these grooves in, which will allow me to mount the motors. The motors slot into those grooves, and you'll notice they're facing in opposite directions, so we can drive each one with a belt onto the pulleys on the wheels. And these can be pulled up in the slot to tension the belt. So all I have to do is now measure, once the belt is tensioned, the length of the slot underneath. I've made some tabs which fit in, which are perfectly the right length, 
and I can snap those into place and stick them in with double sided tape, having tensioned the belt, to hold the motors in place. So now everything runs really smoothly with a tensioned belt, so there's not too much slack and we can run the wheels really accurately. There's a lid that screws on the top where we're going to mount some of the electronics, but now it looks like there's quite a lot of friction in that drivetrain, so it will actually stand up by itself statically. However, of course, as we start driving, it's just going to tip over, so we need some electronics to actively control the stability. I decided those tracks are a bit smooth, so I've printed some flexible TPU treads which I've glued on all over. And that's quite important to have good traction with a balancing robot. So now let's try pushing that along, we can see we've got lots of traction and we can back drive that mechanism, so it seems pretty okay. However, if I try and steer, we'll notice that actually those sprockets walk out of the treads and the tracks come off completely. So to try and combat that, I've made some shims which fit on the back and front of the wheel, and these have got a chamfer all round the edge, which will hopefully keep those sprockets in the tracks. I fitted those on the front of the wheel and also on the back of the wheel, so this now makes the track wider so it doesn't twist quite as much, and hopefully those pointy pieces will mean it keeps aligned as the tracks twist. So now if I steer, we actually keep them on perfectly well, so that plan seems to have worked out okay. I'm using an O-Drive 3.6 to control those brushless motors, and that'll allow accurate positioning using two encoders which are mounted on the back of each motor, and these are 8192 CPR encoders. The main balancing action we need is very similar to the single wheel on my one wheel balancing robot, and you can check that out in my YouTube channel, it only went out a few weeks ago. And for that reason, I've lifted the electronics straight off that project. We've got an Arduino Mega, which is going to deal with all the balancing, and an Arduino Pro Mini with an MPU6050 inertial measurement unit, which we're going to use to get the angle of the robot. I'm using a PID controller to make the robot balance using the inertial measurement unit value and driving the O-Drive to drive the brushless motors. And that's pretty easy for me because I've done it lots of times before, so with some arbitrary values, it pretty much works straight away. At least it does with fairly normal shaped round wheels on carpet, obviously we haven't put the tracks on yet. But that is a completely different story. There's actually quite a lot of friction in those tracks with the bungees holding them against the sprocket, and as I'll discuss shortly, the sprocket becomes stable and unstable as it rolls within the tracks. So we need to do some more tuning. After a bit more tuning, I've got rid of the oscillations and it seems to work smoothly enough. I was really hoping that we could get it to stand completely still using the friction in the tracks to damp the motion. So this is about the best I can get out of it, it will stay stable in certain places, and I can actually make it stable so it doesn't oscillate at all anymore, and eventually, most of the time at least, it will eventually settle, so after a bit of oscillation, shoving it backwards and forwards a bit, we eventually find a place where the friction in those tracks damps the motion, and it will become completely stationary. This works in certain places but not others, because in certain places the sprocket is unstable on the pegs, and in other places it's more stable, so that actually changes the characteristics as it goes. As before, I'm using my Everything remote to control the robot, this is an Arduino Mega reading the sticks and switches, and I'm using a pair of nrf 24 l one radio chips to get that data onto the robot. So let's give it a drive. So, I can just about drive around, it's fairly stable, I probably should have left the gain higher so we still had those oscillations, but it was much more aggressive, because sometimes it just doesn't want to go when I push the stick forward, because it's not in the right balancing state or there's too much friction on the tracks. Let's just try and drive back in shot here, and as you can see I can steer and I can drive backwards and forwards, and things seem relatively okay. But since we've got some self-laying tracks, we should probably try driving over some obstacles. The first one is the coiled up mains lead test. So not too much trouble there, I could probably do with that extra gain to get over the lumps and bumps, but the tracks seem to work pretty well and it seems to stay balancing quite stably.
But let's try something a bit more lumpy. I've got some discarded 3D prints from previous projects. So those tracks look pretty good, I guess as long as one section fits over whatever obstacle we're trying to drive over, then the rest should follow and everything should be fine. So even though tractors don't really go very fast, and essentially that's what the tracks were designed for, I can get up to quite a large velocity on those wheels, and the tracks seem to work perfectly well with just those bungee cords holding them on. It does however sometimes go wrong though. Occasionally the tracks pop out and get misaligned with the sprockets and then the robot trips over its own wheels, so we just need to put that back and check the alignment. I'm pretty sure this may have happened to the tractors though because I found this example of a more advanced track which has this strange looking curved oblong floating rail and rollers on each section of the rotorped tracks, and I assume that's much better at keeping the tracks on the sprocket. So I think I've accomplished another video about weird wheels, if you've got any other ideas you'd like to see then put those in the comments below to this video. So I'm going to publish this as usual as open source and you can find the CAD and the code download on my GitHub and the link is in the description to this video. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership those links are in the description to this video as well and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and also sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up to be part of all that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.